Hi, I'm Katie with Blackberry Hill House, and this is week three of my 2024 baking challenge, where I bake one brand new recipe every single week during the entire year, and I share it with you, and hopefully you bake along with me. Let's get into today's recipe. All of these 52 recipes I have found on the King Arthur Baking Company website. I'm a huge fan, but I'm also baking on a budget. So that's one thing you can count on is that if I can cut costs, cut corners, and alter recipes to fit in with our allergies and the picky eater, I'm gonna do it. So today's recipe for week number three is chewy chocolate chip cookie bars. I love a cookie bar. My grandmother used to bake cookie bars with us when we were itty bitty, huge fan. I have never made them myself. So this is gonna be super fun and I'm really excited about it. I'm busting out the mixer for this. You can always mix by hand. I don't want to. <laughs> I do not want to do that. Um, so the first step is to tell you what the ingredient list is and I'm gonna have to read that off. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. Okay, this recipe is pretty straightforward and simple. There's not a lot going on. It's basic, but it's gonna be amazing. Even if I make a few mistakes, and if you've been here for the last two weeks, you know I'm gonna make a few mistakes. Baking is science, baking is chemistry, baking is heart, baking is chaotic, and we can have fun with it, make mistakes, and still end up with something that's delicious. All right, recipe calls for 11 tablespoons of butter. You're gonna wanna melt it, which I forgot to do, so I'm gonna have to pause the video to do that, but it's gonna be melted butter, 11 tablespoons. Then we have two cups plus two tablespoons of light brown or dark brown sugar. You gotta pack that down in your measuring cup. I have that right here. I pre-measured everything because the last time I didn't, um, I was so busy talking to you that I did not measure things correctly and it was a headache for the rest of the recipe. That was in week one. <laughs> All right, we have a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I got a two pack of these off of Amazon. These are giant bottles of the good stuff. But you know what? Imitation vanilla is fine too. Don't stress about it. It doesn't have to be the top of the line quality ingredients. You're gonna get something great, whether it's real vanilla or imitation vanilla. You are also going to need a fourth of a teaspoon of butterscotch flavor or vanilla butternut flavor. That says that it's optional. You could always add another fourth of a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna go with my personal favorite, which is rum. I wouldn't go with anything citrusy I feel like that would just take away from the sweet factor of all of the three cups of chocolate chips we're gonna add. So kind of play with your flavors a little bit. Then we have three large eggs right here. If you're allergic to eggs, there are so many alternatives. It just doesn't have to be like the egg substitute. A fourth of a cup of applesauce is the equivalent to one large egg. So you can always use applesauce too. I have, my sister-in-law uh, is allergic to eggs, so when I make anything that where she might be here to eat, I need to keep that in mind. All right, we have two and one fourth teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of espresso powder. I have never used espresso powder, but a lot of the recipes that I wanna try this year call for it. Um, I found this Anthony's espresso baking powder on Amazon, and I will put that link below. This stuff smells amazing, so I cannot wait to try it out. And I put that in here with my baking powder and my salt, which I shouldn't have done because the salt is supposed to go in with the vanilla, but you know, it's, it's where I'm at in life. I didn't read through the directions completely before I started measuring things out. You should probably do that. And honestly, even if I did read it out all the way through before I started measuring, I still would have messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> ADHD brain for the win. All right, the other thing we have is two and three fourths cups of all-purpose flour or cake flour or whatever. If you have bread flour, it's gonna floof a lot. 
Um, all purpose flour is where it's at and the cheap stuff is just fine. Oh, and our three cups, <laughs> three cups of chocolate chips. That's a lot. All right, I'm gonna pause the video, melt my butter, and then we will come back to get this going. I'm really excited about it. Okay, I'm back with melted butter. If you're melting your butter in the microwave, don't go until it's all completely melted because if you stir the little pieces that are left, they're gonna melt, and then you're not frying your butter and making a mess inside your microwave, which you would need to then clean. I hate cleaning the microwave. It is my least favorite chore. But stirring this butter, there we go, it is all melted. All right, that's gonna go into my bowl. I do love my KitchenAid mixer. I think it's fantastic, and I could not do all the baking that I do without it. It was really, really put to work on uh, cookie day this year. When I'm baking, I also like to have a little plate to set my bowl down on or set my spoon down on. Um, I forgot, we have to start the oven first. Uh, 350 degrees. And we need to grease our pan. It should be a nine by 13 pan. Metal is fine, I'm going with glass. If you go with a dark metal pan or a dark glass pan, you're gonna have to bake yours a little longer and I'm just using cooking spray. You can use anything you want. I like cooking spray because it's easy. Also, I should probably put my apron on because we are leaving the house today to go visit our eldest son at his apartment. And um, <laughs> there's no graceful way to put this apron on, but I love it so much. And yesterday I got, or not yesterday, last week I got covered in uh, flour when we made the tasty toaster tarts, which I'm better at saying this week. Okay, I'm covered, oven's going, mental calculations. We are gonna add our sugar next. So I'm just gonna dump it all in. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dump all this sugar in. That is a lot of sugar. So much sugar and on we go lifting up the bowl is a good idea if you have a lift mixer chaos baking friends all right we're gonna get oops, we're gonna get that mixed up all right I always have to turn my mixer off to scrape the sides. Um, I didn't have to do that in the other one, but I think because this one is so tall, I, I just, it makes me uncomfortable to reach in there. I could do it with the old one. I don't understand what my hang up is, but here we go. Okay. That looks like sugar and butter. Next up are Salt, you wanna do your salt. I added my salt in with the baking powder and the espresso powder. So that's just gonna come in at the end. It'll be fine, everything will be fine. We need our teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm measuring this time. I know I say measure vanilla with your heart, but like I even overflowed my spoon a little. And your fourth a teaspoon of whatever flavor you're doing. Yeah, that'll work. That was more than a fourth of a teaspoon. That's what I get for not measuring. All right, we're turning that back on. Really get that going. Okay, next up, you, the cats are loud today. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that your butter mixture is not hot because we're gonna put the eggs in next. You're gonna put an egg in at a time. I'm gonna try that, but since I put them all in the same bowl. Oh, and a little tip. Whether you're using fresh eggs right from the chicken house or you're using store-bought eggs, don't crack your eggs into whatever you're baking. 
not just because they're shells, but I can't tell you, I, I mean, I love to bake, so I've done a ton of baking in my 43 years on this planet. I have cracked open store-bought eggs and found ick inside. They, it's rare, but it happens. And then you've wasted all of your ingredients. We're baking on a budget. We're keeping that in mind. One dirty dish so you can crack an egg into it, way worth it than ruining your entire batch of whatever you're baking. So crack your eggs into a bowl before you add it into your mixture. Fun fact, I can't crack an egg with one hand. I've tried, I do not have the dexterity to pull that off. If you can, that's awesome and I'm jealous. Okay, um, yeah. So the reason we're not adding eggs to hot anything is because what happens when eggs heat up? They get scrambled. You don't want scrambled eggs in with your cookie bars, or maybe you do. I'm not gonna judge, but that's not what I want. So I'm gonna try to do one egg at a time here. Okay, that's one. I'm gonna set this bowl there because I don't like getting raw egg all over the counter. You're gonna wanna mix completely after every single egg, so you shouldn't be seeing any egg before you add the next one. It's time consuming, but I get it. That includes your egg whites. So I'm gonna whip this a little more. Okay, next egg. Next. Okay, that wasn't as challenging as I thought it was gonna be. I really thought I was gonna struggle with that. And our last egg. And I'm gonna turn it down a little first. All right, last egg is in. There we go. I like it when the when the whisk finally catches the egg and it just explodes it all over the place. I don't know why, I think that's just fun. Make sure that you're scraping the sides and the bottom of your bowl. Uh, this KitchenAid mixer is really nice about that. It doesn't really accumulate much down at the bottom or on the sides, but my old one did. I don't know if that's because my old one was well, well loved, well used and older, or if it's because this one is the lift instead of the tilt. My old one was a tilt, which it was great. Don't get me wrong. I loved that thing. I almost regret giving it away because then I could have had two mixers, which would have made cookie day so much easier. All right, we're good with that. Next up, we're gonna start adding our baking powder and our espresso. And I really wish that you can smell this. I'm not like a espresso or coffee kind of person, but this stuff is really good. It smells good. I'm sure it's gonna add a whole level of flavor to our cookie bars. All right. But seriously, I could just, oh, that does smell so good. Oh, wow. Okay, do you know what this reminds me of? Um, when we used to stay with our grandparents, um, my grandmother always baked, and my grandfather always had a cup of coffee in the mornings before he would leave for work. And that combination is what I'm smelling right now, and I'm getting all nostalgic. All right, I'm gonna scrape the side a little here at the top. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. <laughs> All right, then we're gonna start adding our flour. Okay. I like to add it a little bit at a time. I feel like it incorporates better and it doesn't stress out my mixer, which this thing should never be stressed out, but I've managed to stress it out a few times. Okay, next.
This is the kind of recipe that you could totally make um, in the morning if you had to go somewhere and take a nice baked treat. The waiting comes in after you pull it out of the oven. And we'll talk about that after I put it in the oven. I don't know if you can hear me very well over this thing. Who else can't count while they're talking to people? That's also when I'm making icing for, I make birthday cakes for friends and family. And when I'm making my buttercream icing, anytime I'm measuring out the powdered sugar for the icing, I have those like bread ties, those twist ties. And I count out how many cups or half cups I'm gonna need of the sugar. And I put that many twist ties. And then as I'm dumping that amount into my icing mixture, I move one twist tie over. And then that way when they're all gone, I've used all of the sugar that I should have. I get distracted. So this is good for all my ADHD bakers out there. It's just a, a, little, a little helper, a little tip that can help you not add too much or too little when you're just scooping repetitively. You can also go by weight. If I'm making a big cake, I know that it's just gonna take the whole bag of powdered sugar. I buy that stuff in bags, not boxes. <laughs> Somebody's always having a birthday. As a matter of fact, I will be baking cake tonight for a friend's birthday tomorrow. Pokemon themed cake, super excited. It's gonna be fun. Okay, this is taking forever. But good things come to those who wait. I can smell the espresso powder and it, it just, it was such a tiny amount, but my gosh, it smells so good. And I can smell a hint of the rum too, maybe because I put a lot in there accidentally. But I'm excited about how this is gonna taste. Now we can go a little bit faster here at the end. Definitely getting a little thick. That's okay. If you see when you go slower, it gives the flour a chance to work in. So you're not, you don't have flour just billowing out of your bowl whenever you dump it in. Playing the long game, man. Playing the long game. All right, that's it for the flour. Now I am gonna turn this off and scrape the sides of my bowl now. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. Okay, I was skeptical about the espresso powder and decided to just go for it and try something new and step outside of my comfort zone. And I am so glad that I did because if this tastes how it smells, it's gonna be so good. Like seriously. I may not take these to our son's house. These might have to stay home. We have four kids. The elder three are all adults and they're all living on their own. And then we have the eight year old. And that's on second marriage babies. So we're gonna go visit the eldest son at his apartment today. Okay, this is done. This is done, this is done, this is done. Um, it's ooey, it's gooey, and all we have to add is our chocolate chips. But I'm gonna scrape all of this batter off of here much as I can anyways. 
Remember, we are not, in this year of 2024, we are not eating raw batter, people. That is how you get sick. It's not safe. Food poisoning is not fun and can lead to more dangerous complications. Just don't do it. Just wait till it's baked or go to the store and get the safe chocolate chip cookie dough to eat. That's fine. Okay, our oven is ready, which is good timing because we are going to stir in our chocolate chips. You're not adding these with the mixer attachment um, because it will obliterate your chocolate chips or your candies. It doesn't have to just be chocolate chips. You can have a mix of chocolate chips and peanut butter chips, chocolate chips and butterscotch. Uh, you can add nuts, you can add candy pieces. That's what my grandmother used to do, like leftover Halloween candy. Would She'd chop it up and it would get put in the cookie bars. So amazing. But you're gonna wanna mix this in by hand. I mean, unless you want your chocolate chips to get all beat up that's fine too i've done that i have absolutely made chocolate chip cookies and mixed the chocolate chips in with my mixer and it just gets shredded but then you have more chocolate in every bite so there's pros and cons oh my gosh this is thick and hard to mix but here we go that's a lot of chocolate chips <laughs> this looks awesome though and it smells so good. Make sure that you're getting the bottom of your bowl scraped up because otherwise you will not have any of your mix-ins on the bottom. Okay, that's mixed in. We're gonna grab our baking dish that has already been greased and we're gonna dump. We're gonna dump all of this in here Oh my gosh, this is very heavy. So if you have mobility issues or weakness in your hands, you may just wanna scoop this out instead of trying to lift the entire bowl. There's nothing wrong with that. I kind of wish that I had done that, but I've committed. <laughs> and I'm just gonna suffer through. And maybe the next time I make these, I will Bake them when Scott is around to do this for me. Get yourself a partner that helps you in the kitchen because it is awesome. He made chili yesterday and it was so good. I'm very excited to have chili leftovers for lunch today and for dinner and breakfast tomorrow because it's winter and you eat chili in the winter. Although I'll eat chili year round. It doesn't have to be just winter for me. Okay, now we're gonna press this all the way around. Don't leave any gaps. And it does say that you can wet your spatula or your fingertips to do this. You're gonna try to make this as smooth as possible on the top. Mine is very lumpy. Um, it's not really sticking to my spatula, so I don't think I need to wet it down. But this is definitely, um, it's definitely lumpy. So I'm gonna try to smooth it out as best as I can. I, don't, I mean, you guys have, if you were here for the last two weeks, you've now seen me roll out crusts and doughs and I'm not very good at making things even. <laughs> Oh, kitty cats. All right. That is as even as mine is going to get, and that's, that's okay. I can work with this. This is good. I could sit here and do this all day and keep working at it, but we don't have time. A little bit more. Little bit more. Try not to waste any dough. Okay. This is going to go into the oven for 30 to 32 minutes and we're gonna talk about what happens when it comes out of the oven because I want you to be prepared. This requires a little bit of work once it's done baking. All right, in we go. My oven smells like bacon and that is a beautiful thing. 
All right, we're gonna set our kitchen timer for 30 minutes. Okay, you can't test these like you can brownies or cake because the center is going to be lava. What you're looking for is, mm, okay, there shouldn't be any wet batter showing towards the edges. So you're looking for done edges. And what does this say? Yeah, no wet batter showing towards the edges. The center is gonna look raw and that's okay. It's going to solidify up as it cools. Um, I actually do that with my chocolate chip cookies. I underbake them a little bit. And when I pull them out, just the edges have just started to turn golden and they look goopy in the center. And I just leave them on the pan for about five minutes before I put them on a cooling rack and they start to solidify up. But then they're gooey and chewy and fantastic. That's the way I like my cookies. Okay, so let's see here. When you take your pan from the oven, you're going to use a heat proof spatula to press down the edges. This is gonna make the bars, so they're gonna floof up on the edges. You're gonna press that down. That's gonna help make the bars all level across the top. Um, and you're not going to cut them until they cool completely. Now, if you were with me for last week, we cooled our tasty toaster tarts in the refrigerator on a rack. You can't do that with this. They're just gonna have to sit out and cool down. I'm estimating it's gonna take at least an hour because those are some solid bars and they're gonna be in there for a while. So uh, hopefully they'll be done by the time it's time for us to leave after lunch. I'm, I'm gonna cross my fingers. Um, the recipe also says that you can let them cool overnight. So this is always something that you can make at the end, like if you're going to a, a barbecue or a, a get together or a social function of some type, we don't do that that often. I'm very much an introvert these days. Um, you can make these the night before and just let them cool on the counter overnight and then they'll be ready. But when you pull them out of the oven, press everything down with a spatula. Okay. I'm going to get this kitchen cleaned up and I'll see you back in a half hour. Fingers crossed. Hopefully this recipe was so much easier than the last two. Let's hope that everything turns out the way it is supposed to. See you back in a half hour. That 30 minutes went by super fast. My timer's going off and let's see what we've got. Oven mitts. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay, I see what they meant when they talked about the center being ooey and gooey because it is but I don't see that shine on the edges. So this has gone exactly like the way it was supposed to. So, excuse the dishwasher noise. We have pulled it out of the oven. I have my spatula and I'm just going to gently press down. I mean, there's not, okay, yeah, I can see. You can see how when you press down on it, it kind of flattens out towards the edges a little more. Okay. This smells so good and it's gonna be absolute torture to wait for it to cool down. It's the cats on their treadmill. <laughs> it's so loud in this house today, but honestly, the last two videos were an anomaly because it's always loud in my house. Even though there's only three humans living here, there's four cats and a dog and a bearded dragon and a hermit crab. So at any given time, chaos reigns in my house. And we're here all the time too. We work from home. We do virtual school. So somebody is always here. Okay. I'm going to quit messing with this. It's, these are thick, thick bars. So yeah, I can absolutely see, um, wow, these are gonna be so good. Okay, we're gonna let them cool completely, either overnight or for a few hours before you even try to cut them because that center, if you tap on it lightly, you can tell it's, it's pretty, 
it's pretty molten in there. Um, don't tap on chocolate chips, hot chocolate chips. Youch. But yeah, okay. We're gonna come back to this in an hour or two and cut them and give them a try. But based on the smell alone, I think this is definitely gonna be a winning recipe. See you back soon. All right, we're back. It's been a little over an hour and these are, well, they're still a little warm in the middle, but we can't wait anymore. So I'm going to, now I only had mine in the oven for like a half hour. Um, 30 minutes is what I put them in for. And these edges do seem pretty crunchy, but we'll see. I'm gonna loosen up the edges here. And then I'm just going to go for it. We're going to make these kind of bite size. These are definitely ooey and gooey. That's awesome. I mean, they're done. They're just that gooey not a problem for me. Let's see, I'm going to get this center one out first. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Needs to set up longer, for sure. Good flavor, but Honestly, I don't wonder if I should have left it in for another 10 minutes or so. Um, the center of this is just mush, delicious mush, but maybe I could have given it another five to 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. It's not exactly like a raw batter. And the edges in the bottom are totally set. Um, but it's definitely falling apart. Here, let me show you. So this is definitely falling apart in the middle. Very... <laughs> Very ooey and gooey. Um, but the bottom is all set. So maybe 35 minutes. I think you just need to watch it and see. Um, I'm gonna call it a win though. I'm gonna make this again, maybe with some different candies and um, maybe bake it a little bit longer. But I'm gonna call this a winning bake today. Finally, finally, we got an easy winning bake. Okay, so that wraps up week three of our 2024 baking challenge. I hope that you had fun. I hope that you ended up with something delicious, and I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button and come back next week. The recipe I picked out for next week is an interesting one. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. I told my mom what it was, and she's like, you're going to make what? I'm sorry. I don't think that goes together. But we're going to do it anyways because we're trying new things, we're having fun, we're learning, and we're hopefully eating delicious things at the end. So I will see you next time.